and welcome to this week's B and Z World Report. I am your host, Angela Ray, where we will discuss global topics and events from around the world. We are live on location at the American Tobacco Historic Campus in beautiful downtown Durham. We decided to take a break and get out of the studio for a little while and bring you some news that you could use close to home. Our first story comes to us from the News to Know section of the brand news website. And we say congratulations to North Carolina Central University for marking their centennial anniversary with a gala. So the event took place on last Saturday and featured all kinds of entertainment, including singer, actually musician, Branford Marcellus, and the world-renowned North Carolina Central University Jazz Ensemble. Now, the university presented a new award this year. It's called the Shepherd Medallion, named for the founder of North Carolina Central University, and presented it to six outstanding individuals with connections to the university, the community, and its professors. And again, this story comes to us from the News to Know section of the brand news website. All right, our next story comes to us from Cleveland.com and the Harlem Children's Zone in New York City offers hope to families in healing. Well, I'm sure you've heard about the acclaimed Harlem Children's Zone project in New York City. The organization spends about $40 million each year to blanket its community in terms of services for schools, health care, as well as daycare, counseling, and job training. Well, during his campaign, President Barack Obama hailed the concept as the future for erasing urban poverty. Well, two cities in Ohio are looking to borrow on that idea. Both East Cleveland and Cleveland have applied for federal startup funds to create their own promised neighborhoods. And I'm sure that we're going to hear more about both of those as they get those promised neighborhoods established. All right, our next story comes to us from jbhe.com, and that's the website of the Journal of Blacks in Higher Education. Good news coming from the United States Census Bureau. Well, new data from the Census Bureau reports that about three million African Americans now hold bachelor's degrees. Now, in addition to that, a little over one million hold master's degrees. 160,000 African Americans hold professional degrees and a whopping 127,000 African Americans hold doctoral degrees. If you add that up, more than 4.6 million African Americans now hold college degree. Well, right now, we're gonna go to Christopher Play Martin where he is on the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage, a fundraiser for the Tom Joyner Foundation. We're gonna catch up with him as he talks to Tom Joyner Jr., AKA Killer, and find out what this cruise is really all about. Uh, my name is Thomas Joyner Jr. I'm President and CEO of the Tom Joyner Foundation. Uh, this is our 11th uh, Fantastic Voyage. It's our largest fundraiser for uh, the foundation. We raise money to uh, assist students and historically black colleges and universities throughout the country. It's a big honor, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to grow with our father uh, throughout all of this. Uh, you know, he's been DJ all of our lives, and for uh, the morning show to really take off and blow up while we were in college, and then they'll be able to come out and be able to work with them. Uh, in a family business environment, it's just, you know, it's a tremendous honor. Uh, it's something that, you know, fortunately has been tradition in our family. Uh, my father, uh, put, maybe my grandfather put his sons to work, you know, uh, you know learning you no know, trades in the family business and that kind of thing. But I'd uh, be able to work you know, in a family business environment, you know, it's, it's, it's a great honor, it's a great opportunity. And it's something that I hope to be able to pass down to my, to my children. Is there anyone that you've ever met that you always wanted to meet or by coming up in it is just a day at the office in regards to oh, being around well-known famous people there have been there, there you no know, throughout the years uh like you said with you no know, with, with your son growing up with you mm -hmm. my father's also a disc jockey my whole life so i've met a lot of great uh great celebrities great individuals great people mm -hmm. like i was just way into you i can remember that you know the first time i met uh you and kid at the jack the wow. rapper night too mm -hmm. um i was a, you know i was a, i was 16 then child of hip-hop and uh, throughout meeting, you know, you know, people like Prince, uh, eventually the President of the United States, you know, it's just been, it's been, a, it's been a tremendous blessing. I feel mm -hmm. very blessed and honored to be able, you know, to mm -hmm. live the life that I lived and be able to you know, grow up under the father and, and the parents that I have. Uh, I can't even lie about that. In the journey, 
What was the most memorable thing you could ever, you know, to this point that you can remember in regards to who you've met or an incident or the, the highest point or whatever? Does anything come to mind? Yeah, the one, no, the one, the one moment that always comes to mind, you know, in my life's journey was uh, back around 2002. Uh, when the, when I was uh, still working as a producer with The Morning Show and we did a broadcast uh, from the Supreme Court steps uh, at 5 in the morning on the day that they were going to hand down the University of Michigan affirmative action case. Um, like all broadcasts, we got there the night before, set up in front of the Supreme Court and all that. And afterwards, I went, because I'm a Howard University alum, I went by to see some of all my old friends. As I'm crossing at the stoplight of 6th Street and Georgia Avenue, not Georgia Avenue, 6th Street and Rhode Island, traffic stopped. Because it was going to be the Supreme Court landmark case on affirmative action, the Howard students has had a candlelight visual starting at Howard University, marching all the way down to the Supreme Court. And that was just, man, that and probably the Million Man March were two of the just most memorable experiences in my life in terms of just making me proud not only to be a black man, to be a Howard student, to be where I was, and to be in the right place and the right time to witness something like that, to see, you know, uh, standing up for something that was, and this during the Bush years, during 9-11, when, you know, protest was not, you know, the, the white conservative establishment was frowned down upon it, but, you know, the HG students marching can line solidarity all the way down 6th Street to the Supreme Court, and that was a moment. When you're gone and your name comes up, what do you want people to say about you? What will your legacy be? My daughter's name is Griffin. It's the only child I have right now. My wife is pregnant with another one, but anybody's there, thank you. Anybody to say what, what my legacy will, I want to be, I want them to say, that was Griffin's dad who taught her how to whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it is that she that she does, and to make a positive impact on the world. I just want to be associated with that. We love parts like like my father's parts and my brother. Thank you, Christopher Martin, for that special report on board of the fantastic voyage. Boy, everybody and their mama was on the cruise. Unfortunately, I was not there. All right, and our final story of this week's report, actor Gary Coleman has died. On last Friday, Gary Coleman lost his life as a result of being pulled from life support. The 42-year-old actor was best known for his character on the hit 70s sitcom, Different Strokes. After suffering from an intracranial hemorrhage at his home in Utah on last Thursday, he was rushed to the hospital where he regained, where he had consciousness for a while, but after he lost consciousness, his family and his friends decided it was time to say goodbye. Of course, Coleman was married uh, in 2007. At the age of 39, he married Shannon Price, who was then 22. We say farewell to our favorite What You Talking About Willis 70s actor, Gary Coleman. And that's it for this week's BNZ World Report at the American Historic District in downtown Durham. For more news with less of our views, please visit the website at brandnews.com. Make it a great week.